Hey, good morning, Eastern Oregon, and welcome to this March 28th version of AM Live on EOA, your connection to Eastern Oregon, and we're also on the EOA network. And here in a bit, we're going to have Dr. Kelly Ryan, the president of Eastern Oregon University, with us. So, yeah. How are you, man? First Friday. First Friday. Opening day for baseball. Oh, the, Best the, day of the, the real year. opening day? The, yeah. yeah like I said, this last week and a half is my favorite uh, time of year for sports. March Madness for yeah. women's and men's, the NCAA wrestling tournament, and opening day baseball. So is March Madness over? No. No. Okay. Nope. We're in the Sweet 16 down to 8 in men's and women's. Okay. Yeah. You hear about what happened to uh, Utah? Uh-uh. In, so, so the first and second rounds were in Spokane at Gonzaga. Uh-huh. And they, they didn't have enough hotel rooms because it, the men's tournament was there, too, and they were also having state tournaments for high school sports. Mm-hmm. So they sent them to, as long as, the, the NCAA rule is you have to be within 30 miles of the facility. You have to be able to house everybody that's playing in the tournament. Otherwise, you can't host it. Okay. So they sent them to Coeur d'Alene and put them in a hotel. Yeah. And I guess two different times they're racially attacked. You know, verbally. Yeah. And and there's a big uproar in the in, from U, University of Utah and in with the NCAA right now because in they had them you know in Coeur d'Alene, which is about a half an hour drive. Right. And they uh, that that happened, and so now you know that that's gonna hurt Spokane's you know Gonzaga's chances of hosting in the future. So who racially? Somebody in Coeur d'Alene. Who? Somebody, oh, see, and yeah. so the so headlines are all about how Idaho's, you know, or northern right Idaho, Idaho racist, yeah. KKK capital of the world, <laughs> this, that, you know what yeah. I mean? So it just, it's just been rampant the oh. last couple of days. I think, it, I think it came out last week, late last week, but it's really uh, hit social media in the last couple of days. Huh. Yeah, bad. All right. bad for Spokane. So what they did was as soon as a couple of the teams lost, they brought the, the teams that they had staying, you know, Away, yeah, yeah. closer to, to Spokane, but yeah. I mean, that's going to hurt their chances to host in the future. That sucks. Cause yeah, it's good for the Pacific Northwest. It's good for a small school like Gonzaga. You know what I mean? They, yeah. they only enroll like seven thousand people. Right. And they're hosting the first two rounds of both the men's and the women's NCAA tournament. That's huge. Yeah. It's a lot of money for yeah. for that area. And that's too. A, you've been to that arena or the that gymnasium. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was going to yeah. say yeah. you did a video. I've taken yeah. pictures. In yeah, there. I was going to yeah. say. Yeah. yeah. Taking couple, pictures at yeah. EOU basketball. Yeah, a couple of years ago, EOU went there. Yeah, yeah right? it was awesome, man. It was the first game back from COVID. Right. It was Halloween. Right. And it was Chet Holmgren, who was the number two pick overall, who's in the NBA now. Yeah. It was his first game in the kennel, and that place was rocking. Yeah. Oh, my God. I've never seen anything like it. For such a small arena, yeah. the atmosphere is just, woof. Yeah. It's unlike anything. You, you could go to an arena that sits 40,000. And, and it, it's louder in there, I promise you. The whole place shakes because huh. the students jump up and down. I took a video of it. Yeah, it, it, I remember. It, it's yeah. just, it's, it's phenomenal. It's yeah. cool. It's, it's like a gem that we have in the, in the Northwest, really. Yeah. Well, I mean, Gonzaga's been the 13th straight Sweet 16th. Yeah. It's so funny. I mean, they just, their sports have put them on the map. And everybody argues that they play in a crappy conference, which they do. So they get a lot of wins, which yeah. automatically qualifies them for, and, and I'm, I'm not going to argue with people about this because I think they're kind of right. They, they get an easy road into the tournament every yeah. year. They do play the toughest non-conference schedule in the country. But when, you, you know, when you're playing teams in, in their conference, uh, they get a lot of easy wins. Yeah. And then they, they don't ever really do much past the Sweet 16. Mm. You know what I mean? They've yeah. never won a national title. Um, and that would be the only argument that says, you know, like, hey, you you got a pretty easy schedule outside of your non-cons, and you kind of get a pass. You know, a, a lot of times they're like thirty and two or right. twenty seven and four, right. and they they end up being a one seed, and, and it's designed for a one seed to get to the Sweet Sixteen. Yeah, it's not designed for a one seed to lose before the Sweet Sixteen. Yeah. so it's kind of been an easy pass for them, but we'll see. They're, yeah. they're in it again this year. The men and the women. All right, great, great for the school, no yeah, matter how awesome. you cut it. Yep, and it's a great school too. When yeah. I was there, we got there like in the evening, and I went with the players on a tour of the campus. We we rented some of those uh, little scooters, you yeah, know? 
And uh, I want to see you on the and, screen. And right? <laughs> it was that, fun. We I, need I, video. I had one of the one of the players <laughs> took the camera, so I didn't even have to record. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we we went to look inside the gym, and there's this old Russian janitor. Uh-huh. And, he, and he came to the door. He let us in <laughs> at like 9 o'clock at night. So we were the only ones in the kennel. Uh-huh. I took pictures of that, too. It was pretty cool. Yeah. It was pretty cool. And it wasn't planned. I mean, they didn't know that, you know, he didn't know that there was a right. plan. It just kind of worked The out. next day, it just worked out perfectly. Yeah. It was pretty awesome, dude. Yeah, that's yeah, great. It was good. Well, hey, you want to do Let's sports? do it. All right. AM Sports Report brought to you by Hobby Habit right here in the Grand. Go check them out, man. Joe and his team, they, they, they have a sale going on right now. I believe Traxxas RC cars, 20% off. Or you can get like some free light kit. It's a, it, it's like a LED light kit for your uh, race car. Th- those, those RC cars that they have are phenomenal too, like we've talked about before. You can soup them all the way up to like 80 miles an hour. Hobby Habit in the Grand, just for the fun of it. Uh, LHS baseball dropped two out of three in Arizona during their annual spring break trip, which is, I mean, we'll kind of see. We don't really know where this team stands yet just because the Arizona trip's really hard to judge because you're playing basically the best teams in the Western United States. So, I mean, conference-wise, we'll find out more about this team on Tuesday when they open up their GOL play against Baker in Baker. Those games are at 2 and 4. LHS softball is the week off. They'll resume play on Tuesday with their GOL opener at Baker as well. The games are at the same time. I hate that, BC. I hate that they play the softball and the baseball games at the same time. It's the dumbest thing ever because the baseball players right. can't watch the softball right, yeah. players. The parents can't. It's just, it, 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 I'm not a fan of that. And that's up at here all. at Pioneer Park? No, that's in oh, Baker. They, yeah. they open GOL play in Baker. Yeah. Congratulations to Carly Ratke and Christian Azure from the LeGrand Girls Wrestling Team. They both qualified for the U.S. Marine Corps Junior and 16U National Championships in Fargo, North Dakota. They're both 105 pounders. Carly is a 16U and Chris Kirsten is a junior. Kirsten is uh, the daughter of head EOU wrestling coach Dustin Azure. So, like these LeGrand kids, it's crazy. Uh, Mason Wolcott from LeGrand just signed to wrestle at EOU and I just love it. Like these kids, they're, they're staying at home and, and it's. So that, that wrestling program in LeGrand, it starts here. You know, it starts with right. the little teeny guys, and it goes all the way up to EOU now, and it's just, it's awesome. It really is. EOU baseball has UBC at home this weekend for four down at Optimus. Their Saturday and Sunday games, both days, both games are at 11 and 2. So get out there and support them. They're, they're better this year. They're, uh, they're looking to get their first conference win. Right now they're currently 9 and 21 on the season. They're 0 and 8 in conference, but... They got a chance. I mean, they played uh, LCSC tough on the road last weekend. And this team, like I said, it's way better than it was last year. And the, and the atmosphere is different. That's the most important thing. The atmosphere in the dugout is completely different this year in, in Kyle Treadway's second year. I mean, I, I, I would almost want to count call this his first year. Even though he came three games in last right. year, I, I, I don't really hold last year. I don't hold him accountable for that. Well, yeah, he came... It, yeah, yeah but, but but I mean, this year he changed. Uh, there's a lot of new players, so right. I mean, I would hold them accountable for this year, and they're a lot better. Good. EOU track and field has a weekend off. EOU softball hosts the University of Providence today and tomorrow up at Peggy Anderson Memorial Field. Those games are t- they changed the time today. It's gonna the first game is gonna start at 12:30, second game 2:30, and then tomorrow the game is at. 11 and 1. So get up there and support them. This EOU softball team is really good. They're 10 and 2 in the CCC. They're in second place currently. They they already knocked off the number 1 team in the nation at the time, OIT. They they not only did they beat them, they beat them 10 nothing in the second game. They just shut them out. Uh, uh, the pitchers, these these two pitchers, Kylie and Kaylee, they are absolutely phenomenal. Kaylee's going like I said on the show on Tuesday, she's going to be national pitcher of the year. For the NAI, I have no doubt about it. She's already won CCC Pitcher of the Year four times, and she's just basically unhittable. And, and she's going to shatter almost all of the EOU pitching records by the time she's done, which is crazy because she's only going to be here for three years. Yeah. She, she's a redshirt junior, so she has one more year after this. She's been here one year because she is a co- she has a COVID year. You know, yeah. like she went to junior college for two years. She ends up getting three years here, and 
the record book when it comes to pitching is going to have Hoskins all over it by the time she's done here. She's just a phenomenal pitcher. Um, th the, that softball team is currently ranked 15th in the country, and, and they play in the toughest conference in the country by far. There's no conference uh, that even compares to it. So get up there and support these ladies. AM Sports Report brought to you by Hobby Habit, just for the fun of it. Good stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, let's take a look outside. No, somebody said, Idiota with Confederate flags about <laughs> <laughs> Idaho. That's Tyler. TJ, good morning. <laughs> well, and, and he's right, though, because that was one of the comments that uh, the Utah coach said. Was There's co Confederate, the Confederate flags. flags and, yeah. and, and this is coming from a respectable college, women's college basketball coach. Right. Like, yeah. She ain't making this up. Like, yeah. It's crazy. Back to the weather. Yeah. All right. Oh, it looks just kind of rainy and gloomy a little bit. Yeah. yeah my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> and then let's look at the graphic here. It's supposed to get a little better, though. Like, yeah, man, look at that. Next Tuesday is supposed to be 72, something like that. Yeah, but this weekend, Who the, knows, the, right? the rain's going to go away, at least. Yep, it's going to be pretty. Yeah, Saturday, Sunday, supposed to be sunny in the 50s. Monday, 64. Yeah. But so it's, it's still getting all the way down to freezing at night until Sunday. Yeah. Crazy, man. But boy, last night it, it poured. I mean, there was just a there was a lot of rain coming down. I, I was inside. I didn't, yeah, I, it's hard for me to tell when it's raining outside because where my place yeah. is, I don't really know. You know what I mean? Sometimes right. I can hear it. Sometimes I can't. Yeah, it's just a big building. You know what I mean? You don't. You hear other things like that's a big three story building that I live in, and it's completely empty except <laughs> for me, and it's kind of creepy. Sometimes <laughs> it is. That would be fun to like, too. That it's would the be, best. The, yeah. I, I, people watching is so fun. Sometimes yeah. I'll just sit at the window and just yeah. watch the alley. It's awesome. Yeah, so, yeah, Benny and Gabe, we should, like, sneak over to his building sometime <laughs> in the middle of the night. It's trying to scare me? Yeah, you might get yeah. shot, dude. Would I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I probably wouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll send Benny in. Yeah. Yeah. But that alley is so fun to just people watch, like, Especially on Friday and Saturday nights. Oh man, it's just hilarious. Yeah, I... that's that's the highlight it, it of my would, life. That's be, where I'm at in life. It my would be highlight. entertaining. Yeah, what do you do? Yeah, I watch drunk people in the alley. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, all right. Well, hey, let me tell you about uh, uh, one of our sponsors, La Grand Police Department. Is uh, they're right now hiring. Uh, they got several different positions that they're hiring for, but the the advertising that we're doing for them is they're looking for new officers. Great opportunity. Uh, be sure and check that out. You can see the their stuff on our social media, um, and they're they're looking for a few good men and women. And uh, we met with them last week, uh, and it's it's a it's a great place to work. The people speak highly of it. In fact, uh, we'll go to commercial and. Play the commercial that is out there on social media right now. This is Scott, and he's talking about his job at uh, LaGrand Police Department. We'll be Hi, this is Sergeant Scott Norton, LaGrand Police Department. I've been here for about five years, and it's been a great place to work. Uh, you know, law enforcement is it's such a fascinating profession, and really, you can get that job anywhere. What makes LaGrand itself very special, I would say, is our work environment. Is, is great. I've worked at other agencies and I know a lot of places say like we're family and that's what we want to promote but here it's actually real. The admin that we have really invests in their people. They take the time to actually care about. We're kind of that Goldilocks size of agency where we're big enough that there's a lot of opportunities. We get into lots of stuff but there's also that limit that you're able to actually receive professional and personal development from your admin. Uh, they care about your family, they care about your kids, uh, they check in with us regularly and make sure that we're getting where we want to both in life and here at the PD. All right, 
And we're back <laughs> with Dr. Kelly Ryan, president of Eastern Oregon University. Mm -hmm. And man, it's March. And you, you're about done with your first year, right? Yeah, yeah. I've been here about almost nine months now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's crazy. Mm -hmm. How How's it, I mean, you kind of like just jumped into it. How's the year gone and stuff for you? Well, it's been a whirlwind, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, you know, as, as Kyle mentioned, uh, just getting to even know the sports is, you know, with 15 sports teams, you right. know, that making sure that they feel the love from their president, right. and getting yeah. to meet with the community there, um, and just learning about the university in general, you know, uh, just really digging deep, you know, going to the labs, going to the theater events, seeing the musicals, um, you know, meeting the faculty and staff. Uh, it's... Um, I started off the year by making sure I had open sessions with every single unit on campus to hear about, you know, their aspirations for the university um, and also to share my own. Yeah. And, and so a lot of listening um, and a lot of travel, actually. Yeah. Eastern Oregon is vast and we want to make sure that we're learning about the entire community and that, that everybody's got a little face time. And so I've been doing, um, you know, I, I, I think we've hit every single community since I've been here, um, just to make sure that I know everybody's needs and that the community um, knows that EOU is here for them. Yeah, that's awesome. So tell me about, and we've been, we've been trying to connect for a while yeah. uh, and just haven't been able to do it. And so, so some of the some of my questions are just super basic. Okay. Like, yeah. So tell me about how do you how do you prepare yourself to be an EOU, a president of a university? And and kind of tell me about your journey to get here. Oh sure. Um, so I think, you know, it's funny. The thing the thing I get asked a lot is like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, are you okay? And I, I think, you know, the, the best way to prepare for a university presidency is to, to just have the job experience, yeah. right? Yeah. And so um, I think my own background as an academic, so mm -hmm. I actually, you know, have a PhD in history um, and I'm, I'm still engaged with the literature there. Um, and so I spent, you know, a good portion of my career doing the work of a professor um, and doing the work of a university, which is actually transforming students' lives um, right. through through the knowledge that we bestow. And so, you know, I, I know the daily grind of that. Um, when I was in graduate school, I also was an advisor to, to the history majors and the education majors. Um, and then I think, you know, taking on leadership positions is really important because the people are everything, right? Mm -hmm. the, the students we serve are so important, but the people that we work alongside, um, you know, you have to learn about how to manage that, um, you know, what works best. And so I was a dean at uh, the School of Social Sciences at Indiana University Southeast. Then I became provost. And, you know, at that point, you, you're having more and more leadership experience, but you're also still, at least in my case, I'm still very energized by that academic experience. There's nothing more important to me than making sure that people have access to an education that can mm -hmm. transform their lives. And mm -hmm. so, and then I had the opportunity to be the interim chancellor. And so having all of that experience, I think in my background, uh, probably gives me a level of confidence mm -hmm. when I wake up in the morning to, to meet the day. Um, but in terms of preparing for this position in particular, you know, before I arrived, I, I you know, you just sort of read the website, you know, <laughs> you just sort of read the website and, like, and memorize what you can. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, you know, immediately again, you know, people are important to me. And so making sure I was having the conversations and we've continued that. I have a coffee with Kelly every month to make sure people know they can come out and talk with me and communicate, but getting to know the people, getting to know the region, you know, those are the critical things that I'm yeah. undertaking now. So help me understand, and mm -hmm. my ignorance, I'm sorry, the difference between mm -hmm. a provost and a chancellor uh, sure. and, and a president. Yeah how, yeah, how does all of that? Throughout the United States, chancellor and president are pretty much interchangeable terms. It's okay. just a matter of, of how schools design their leadership positions. Uh, Indiana University was designed after a German model, okay. and so that's where the word oh, chancellor comes from. Okay. Yeah, and so Eastern Oregon University has a different pattern and traditions, and so they call presidents. So those are the same jobs. Okay. A provost is someone who runs the academic and academic support services at a university. 
university. It's the number two to the president okay. because, after all, it is an academic enterprise what right. we do. Right. And so um, that work, you know, you have the bulk of the institution reporting up to you, and you're designing the future and the current support that students receive at the university. So it's just absolutely fundamental to what we do. Yeah. Awesome. So at what point, I mean, tell me about how you became aware of EOU and sure. they're looking for a president mm -hmm. and should I apply for, I mean, tell me how that all happened for you. Sure, sure. So um, I, you know, when I was in my former position, um, I knew, okay, this is me. You know, uh, this kind of leadership position is what I like yeah. because I like, um, you know, I grew up in a military family, as I've, I've shared with you previously. And so I'm just moving all the time growing up. So change is something I'm really comfortable in. And, and being a university leader is having to embrace that sense, right. you know, embracing that that movement, the fact that you don't really control your day, you know, <laughs> the, the institution does. Um, but I found it exciting, in particular, the community engagement piece. And so, um, you know, Know, when I was in that position, I was like, okay, I think it's time for me to reach out. Um, and one of the things I also share, and this is corny, but I'm in love with my husband. Uh -huh. And, um, <laughs> you know, I am. I'm deeply, awesome. we, have a, we have a wonderful marriage. And one of the things that the pandemic enabled is uh -huh. remote work. And so he has a great job. Um, but I wasn't really going to be able to move, yeah. um, you know, and have him keep his position. And, and, you know, at the same time that I knew, okay, I think this is what I want to do. My husband, you know, is also more freed up to come with me, right? I'm not right. going to leave my husband behind. Right. Um, so the advertisement for the position appeared. So I get up. So very exciting for you to learn about me. First thing I do every day is I read the news, like many people. And one of the things I read is the Chronicle of Higher Ed. That position was advertised there. And so, um, for me, the reason why I want to be in higher ed is I want to open access to students from across the nation. So I want to work at places whose entire mission is attuned to creating more access, in particular for people who might not consider college. Um, my previous university was also situated and served a large rural community as well as the suburbs of Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and that mission, um, you know, the thing that gets me up every day, I saw that reflected in the advertisement. And so I reached out to the consultants and we had a brief chat and I just kind of sat on it. I'll be honest with you. Um, <laughs> right. uh, I just sort of sat on it. Uh, probably I don't know, maybe a month or so, the search consultants called me back and they're like, you know, you should really, you think know, about this, yeah. think about this. And yeah. so I did. Um, I went ahead and, and drafted my letter uh, and I was fortunate. The search committee, you know, decided to interview me. And, you know, these processes are really they're twofold. I'm, I'm, right. I'm wondering what's happening. They're wondering what's happening, sure, you know, yeah. and, and what I learned that day um, was that, you um, this was a community that was deeply concerned about where the university was headed. And while that can be viewed kind of negatively, what I see in those kinds of concerns are passion, right? right? They're passionate about where is this university headed? And so, you know, they were very concerned about things like enrollment, the student experience. These are things that touch me. And right. so I started to see some synergies there. Uh, now, then when I came for the interview and keeping in mind I'm a historian, <laughs> flying right. to Boise, renting a Jeep, driving on the old Oregon Trail, that was exciting for me. Yeah. Um, and then when I came to the university for the interview, I got to meet all the people. Again, I, I sense that same thing, that, that maybe this community and my values actually share something mm. in common. And so, um, so that kind of sealed the deal for me. That may have been more information than no, you needed. No, that's awesome. No, because I, I mean, uh, I genuinely want to know because I don't, I don't know these stories. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. and, and uh, you know, I'm probably not the, if I don't know, then there are probably others out there that don't either. So, right. yeah, no, so thank you for sharing. So, sure. so what, what was your assessment then before you came? Mm -hmm. And does that match up with, I mean, so is it what you expected? I guess maybe that would be. I think there's always unforeseen challenges, yeah. um, you, you know, that you're going to have to address. Um, and that comes through those relationships that you build once you set down on campus. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that um, 
Jeremy Davis, the, the head of the hospital, yeah. he calls this region um, as, as, as having the qualities of splendid isolation. Uh -huh. I couldn't agree more. I, there's something very special and unique. And, and in fact, I think the way Kyle talks about sports is, is a really great indicator of that. There's an intimacy to this community. There's a, um, a thoughtfulness in the way that we interact with each other yeah. um, that's very appealing. But as we all know, that splendid isolation comes with unique challenges. So when students are on tour of college campuses um, on the west side of the state, for example, they may be able to hit two or three universities in a day. Right. Um, if you're going to come to EOU, you're spending the whole day, right? right. You're not going to, you're not, right. um, yeah, it's not like you have to be intentional. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so <clears throat> I think that some of that isolation poses challenges, even though it, it's also an opportunity. Um, so how do we get the word out about how special and unique what we do here is? Mm -hmm. um, you know, how do we share the kind of passion that Kyle expressed about our athletics um, with people who maybe aren't even looking to the East? So right. it poses some challenges that I, that, you know, you, you can't really know that until you step down on the ground. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I totally understand. I, so I went to Northwest Nazarene in the 80s. And at that time, I mean, Nampa, Boise area was not exploding, you know. So there was a lot of that isolation that was associated with, with NNU. Mm -hmm. That's changed a lot. But still, I, I, that's a really good way of putting it, mm -hmm. you know. S students, and, and the problem is, from a marketing standpoint, is students don't rush towards isolation. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not a, mm -hmm. you know, it's really good for them. It helps them develop in some ways that they never would develop, mm -hmm. you know. But, I mean, I, I get the, the marketing challenge part of that. I, BC, I always say that there's, like, and this speaks for about EOU too, but yeah. about this area, I yeah. can tell you a thousand things that are wonderful and I can only tell you two things that suck. Yeah. <laughs> Access and weather, yeah. and that's it. Just, I mean, it's hard to get to. That's, yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. And 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 the weather. I mean, there's right. times where you can't even get in here. And, yeah. And but I can tell you a thousand things that are great about uh, mm -hmm. Eastern Oregon. Yeah. No, no doubt. Well, and what, and that's it. Once you're here, it's like wow, there's so much here, mm -hmm. you know. And and I totally, I totally understand that. So, mm -hmm. so how's it going? How's, you know, how's the year gone? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe let's start with, you know, some of the, some of the strengths, because you come from the outside. Mm -hmm. What are some of the really powerful strengths that EOU has that is competitive with other schools out there? Yeah, I think um, one of the things that I always think about first when I think about the EOU experience is the intimacy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it speaks to, to Kyle, what you just suggested about um, that kind of small town community um, is that, you know, there are plenty of colleges and universities that advertise that these are small communities and um, a good place for, for your child to land. Right. Um, but I think EOU really lives that out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think that not only do we have these small class sizes, but we also have a manageable stunning campus right. um, for, for students to navigate. Uh, and I think that the ways that we're really focused on building community at the university, I think it helps us live out those values. And it's so important because what EOU is offering, it's offering to these rural communities in Eastern Oregon. Um, students who come from towns with one or two stoplights, you know, La Grande is huge to them, right? right. Um, right. right. <laughs> and so Steady. we want to be mindful of that. But, you know, we're also attracting folks from Portland and Seattle who want to do something a little bit differently, who want to come to a town like this in a small community where they're more than just a number. Anonymity can be great when you're young, but it, it doesn't make you feel special. And so EOU's, I think, able to do that. At the same time, one of the things that, you know, I continue to remain deeply proud about, and I, I feel like I wish the community knew more about this, is so we have this really robust online offerings for students across Oregon and in, even in Washington and Idaho, we have many students. These students who take our online courseworks, generally speaking, are adults. They're adults who are looking to skill up. So over a third of our student body is online and engaged in you know, a transformative life experience of going back to college after being in the workforce. Mm -hmm. I think as we all know, you know, there's a 
you can start out about the same wages. You know, right. if you if you you know graduate from high school, you can get a good job, um, but eventually you're gonna stop out in terms of your career development and growth. And so, what our adult students are doing is they're you know, and this is difficult. I mean, let's be honest. They're right. going back to school. Right. They've got kids. They've got marriages. They probably got dogs and cats too, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but they're spending their time skilling up for the betterment of themselves and their families. And I'm incredibly proud of that because, um, you know, we're here for them and we're offering them the kind of flexibility they need to get to where they want to go in their life to better support their families as well as their own kind of career aspirations. Yeah. It's really important. Uh, and I think, you know, there are some other things that are really special about EOU. We're the most financially manageable institution in the state. By um, far. By far. Yeah, it's not and, even comparable. Right. Yeah, and it's not easy, Kyle, Brett. I mean, it's not easy to be a financially manageable institution. We have to constantly be minding our budget uh, and making sure that we're providing that access that is the driving force in what we do. Right. So, um, you know, those are just three of the unique things. But I, I should at some point mention, I know that y'all in this valley are used to how pretty it is, but... I am, I'm still in awe every day I wake up <laughs> yeah. just how fortunate we are to live in a place that's like this. Yeah. Um, it may have right. some bad weather occasionally. It may be difficult to get through occasionally. But there is, I think that EOU is a stunningly beautiful campus. And I think that we exist in one of the most exquisite valleys in the world. Yeah. So, so one of the best things about social media is opening it up and seeing all the pictures that people post of. Right here, mm -hmm. yeah. right here. I mean, I could I could pull up a hundred of them right now. I'll, I'll, you know what I yeah. mean? It's mm -hmm. just, it's crazy how nice it is here. Yeah. Last night the sunset. I actually had to call my husband. I was like, I've never seen this before. There was like these orange Colors. glitters. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's crazy. Just yeah, something else. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let me talk to you about finances for a minute and the costs of school. Because I've sure. had somebody tell me, mm -hmm. somebody say, well, if EOU doubled. Mm -hmm their tuition, mm -hmm. they would attract different kinds of people. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean yeah, I, and you're laughing. No, Sorry. But I, no, but I mean, the, the, con the concept is, is that, I mean, I think EOU, their tuition fits Eastern Oregon really well, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's why it is what it is. It serves, because that's the purpose, is to serve what it serves. Mm -hmm. but, but there's a certain number of schools, kids out there, mm -hmm. that are shopping for schools, mm -hmm. and they're like, I mean, they will equate, it's the same way that you would equate a Happy Meal, mm -hmm. the price of a Happy Meal versus a, a steak. You mm -hmm. know, do you, I don't know, what do you think about that? Is there any? Yeah, um, I, I don't. I don't think it's true that okay, if we, <laughs> I don't, I, you know, I don't think it's true that if we doubled our tuition, we would be able to attract um, a different kind of student and more students. Um, and the reason why is because institutions with long-standing high tuition rates. Um, I usually refer to them as highly exclusive institutions okay, right. um, because they exclude individuals sure. from the academic experience based on wealth. Um, for me, that's not my mission, mm. but it's also, they have years of traditions of being, you know, let's be honest, a hierarchical organization right. that does not create pathways towards educational growth for all. Um, you know, I, I've probably said it five times today already in my meeting with you, that's not who I am. Right. Um, who I am is the kind of person who wants to make sure every single person in Eastern Oregon, Oregon, Heck, I'll invite you from Washington and Idaho, too, if right. you want. But I want you to have a financially manageable college experience. College continues to be an excellent investment for individuals no matter where they go. The New York Federal um, Reserve just uh, released a study that shows that uh, you know, if you invested from the 1950s onward into stocks, you'd get a 7% return on your investment. But college has a 15% return on investment. That's why adults come back to reskill. That's why young people who are really checking the facts continue to attend college. But for me, I don't want to price people out on their right, journey. No. And I don't want to, I think... And I don't think Eastern Oregon wants me to replicate hierarchy. I don't think they want me to be in, and have an institution that excludes people. I think um, including people is, is kind of where I sit in the world. So, and I, and I couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, you know, as a kid, there were times that I was excluded from the birthday party. And mm -hmm. so I've always been, hey, let's get everybody in. Let's mm -hmm. do everything we can. Do... 
at the same hand, mm -hmm. do we do we charge enough? Do we, you know, I mean, are there, you know, are there some adjustments that can be made? Because I, because I mean, finances are always it's always a dilemma, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I mean, do do, do you understand? I mean, I are do. we? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, you know. You know, this is this is going to turn into a plea, unfortunately. But you know, when we look at higher education funding in the United States, one thing that that Oregonians probably need to come to the table about is how much they're willing to spend on education. Right, right now, Oregon ranks forty fourth in the nation on how much they spend on four year college degrees, how much they spend on the student experience. Does Oregon want to be among the last in the nation in the way we fund higher education? And do I, as a result of that, charge students all this extra money because the state isn't investing in it? Do we want teachers? Do we want nurses? Right. Do we want managers? Do we want highly skilled communicators, artists? Um, if Oregon wants those occupations, it's time for them to step up and tell people to support their local universities. Um, I, I can't. I, I can't tell you. I, I find it. I find it really difficult. You know, to balance our budget and to maintain accessibility and affordability because of that. It, it creates a kind of bind. We all know that universities are serving a really large public good. In addition, you know, we're providing so much sports and entertainment for the community. Um, but we can't take that for granted. You know, EOU won't always be here unless the community steps up, unless right. the government steps up, unless Eastern Oregonians invest in Eastern Oregon universities. I would hate to see Eastern Oregonians continue to choose universities in Idaho or Washington over places like EOU. They should be proud of their institution, you yep. know? Um, so, so I would like us all to invest in Eastern Oregon rather than, you know, laying funding and tuition on the back of these poor students who, after all, they're making a choice to think about their future. Let's not saddle them with, yeah. with unneeded debt. So how can Eastern Oregonians invest in EOU? Well, I think I would love for them to give Eastern Oregon University a second chance. Um, for their grandkids and their kids. Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Oh. You know, I see so many people at our arts events on the Frisbee golf course. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at, it, I even went to a history talk the other day and a lot of community members came. So they see the value of the university every day. I also need them to send their children there. Right. Um, so they may have come to visit the campus and enjoyed, you know, a lot of the entertainment and, and, you know, we're basically an anchor institution in right, this community. Absolutely. We offer so much. Um, I need them to look again at us as a way to preserve their own values mm -hmm. and, and to invest in their own community. Um, I would love people to send their kids over to one of our preview days. You may have been on the campus many times, but once you look at it from a totally other perspective, right. um, once you become, you know, a, a Mountie, uh, you're going to see this campus and community differently. Um, get to meet with the faculty. Um, think about um, how, how you're going to make those local connections and have a really practical education that's going to allow you to advance for the rest of your life. So I would love for us to have more pride in uh -huh. Eastern Oregon and Eastern Oregon's institutions because we're here to serve you. But um, if you look out to, to Washington and Idaho for these services, you know, you're missing out. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm running for county commissioner, okay. and the economic development question is just you hear that over and over again. Mm -hmm. And and I think you're absolutely right. We have to start with what we already have. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a tremendous medical hospital system mm -hmm. here. We need to support that. Mm -hmm. EOU is, I mean, you're right. You guys, those are super anchor tenants, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term, for Union County and mm -hmm. Eastern Oregon. Mm -hmm. And so how... So it, let's say that let's say that you're a grandparent and you don't have control over where your grandkid goes. Yeah. How can they support you? You what can they do? Well, you know, I think they can be part of our community. You mm -hmm. know, as I mentioned, as an anchor institution, we're here for everybody. I right. mean, they can 
partake in any number of things. They can even, a grandparent can even take a class at EOU, say they're interested in artificial intelligence. Maybe that's something they want to learn more about. And, and so they can take a class through us as well. Um, but I do think, you know, having those conversations with the kiddos about, you know, their futures are important. Um, it's fine, you know, you want people to live out their dreams, um, but I want people to understand that Eastern Oregon University, just because it's in your backyard, doesn't mean it's a second class institution. Right. It's a first class institution. Right. You're not letting something go by attending your local institution. You're actually enabling your future success. Good. One of the things that I found so interesting when um, I started traveling around Eastern Oregon and, and talking with folks is so many people in this region will go away for like 10 or 15 years. Right, yeah. But they come back. <laughs> right, yeah. They, Guilty. They come back. <laughs> And that it's is a, a black testament. Hole. It's yeah. A, it sucks you back in. That's what I call it. Yeah. And in there, you know, I, I, I want to learn more about what sucks people back in, but I know that there's something special here. And I know that our institution is part of that. It's part of what makes this community special. But it only remains that way if we all remain invested in it. Yeah. Yep. 100%. Mm -hmm. You know, BC, you want to know what's crazy? If I, if, if I signed up for a class next year, uh -huh. There's a very strong possibility that there'll be three generations of my family at EOU at the same time. If I uh, up, because my dad goes there, my son's gonna go yeah. there. If I signed up for a class, there would be. I might just have to take a class. Just to do I it. love that. Yeah. If you do that, you have to let me know so I can shout yeah, it out. Yeah, my dad's <laughs> currently enrolled, and then my son. He hasn't 100 percent committed, but like he's. We had a conversation last night. He's he's very much leaning towards coming. It's tough though because mom lives on the west side, and yeah. you know there's there's schools over there that he's interested in too. But mm -hmm. he he's he's been on a couple recruiting trips over here, and he's been pretty happy with the OU. Like he's well, and I and I I get what you're saying is that if we're if as adults like non college students we're we're excited about EOU mm -hmm. and and what it has to offer, mm -hmm. then our kids and our grandkids are going to catch on to that. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's kind of funny because I'm, uh, Tim and I are involved in La Grand Rotary mm -hmm. and there's, um, you know, some of our older guys, I mean, they're very older families, their husbands and wives. I mean, they're very supportive of EOU athletics. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, they go regularly as part of their culture. It's part of their thing. But once you get to the 50-year-olds, you know, now Tim goes all the time, clearly, but <laughs> yeah, but but still there's a gap. So in other words, I mean, those, the people that are involved in raising families mm -hmm. and I mean, their lives are just full of family yeah. stuff, they're, I mean, it's just not on their radar mm -hmm. to support EOU. Yeah. It's just not, you know, it's just not a part of their thinking. And yet they probably use so many of our resources. Absolutely. Oh, so take, for example, um, if I just think about the way I walk through my day, um, including, as y'all know, my coffee stop on the way over here, that coffee was made by an EOU student. Mm -hmm. Our students are drivers. They are economic Absolutely. engines of this community because they provide so much labor to so many of these local businesses. There's a mom group that I often see walking through campus with their kiddos because we have such beautiful green space. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then uh, on the, uh, just being honest, at the end of every day, I almost get hit by a Frisbee. There are these young men <laughs> and their Always. young boys Tons who are out there, there. And I, I, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm like, I'm coming! Yeah. Please don't hit Put on me. Put one of those <laughs> vests. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I would encourage people to do more than use our facilities, right? right? I mean, we have a foundation that allows us to maintain such beautiful facilities. You know, I, you know, I, I need the community to support us as much as we support them, I think, right. at the end of the day. There yeah. should be pride in that. Well, and mm -hmm. Tim and I have been sitting on boards literally for years, mm -hmm. and we've talked about you know, helping EOU be more connected to LeGrand and LeGrand be more, because, because EOU is like, it's a little city in and of itself. I mean, it's pretty self-functioning and, you know, I mean, I would, I would venture to say that there's probably staff and faculty that are a part of EOU that, you know, LeGrand may or may not even be on their radar the same that LeGrand 
has people that EOU is not on there. So mm -hmm. connecting, and I mean, and that's that's just a monumental task. Mm -hmm. But but you're right. You know, they're the, those students are a part of our life. They're I mean, we see them and yeah. we see them wearing EOU gear. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the biggest thing that people don't realize about EOU. And I don't know how we can open their eyes better to this is the quality of people that EOU hires. Yeah. And so right. I do a lot with sports, but I do a lot with EOU. Like, I, I mean, I, I interact with a lot of people up there and I'm not just talking about the sports department. I'm talking about all around. Mm -hmm. I've never had any, any doubt in my mind about the quality of people that they hire. And I think that is a key for people to know how, uh, you know, and, and I think that would help with people supporting you. You is like, man, if you spend some time figuring out that these people that they're hiring from janitor Shane all the way to Tim, right? It, it's across the board. You know right. what I mean? It's, it's, it's crazy to me. And I, I would say too, you know, one of the things that I always think about is, you know, when we're out in the community, except me, you know, I'm always trying to wear something okay. that, that lets people know, but we're not usually the faculty and staff badged up, right? No. Um, right. And so I, I also think we're actually everywhere, but we're like this hidden unseen thing. So we're at, you know, the little league, we're the coaches, we're the moms and dads at the schools too. But I think a lot of it, you know, I, I don't think, you know, most of us at the university, well, I do, but everyone else doesn't walk around at the university being like, I'm EOU. Except right? the coaches. Except all the coaches wear their gear. Yeah, that's true. That's I mean, you, true. you can tell an EOU coach from anywhere. I mean, so I mean, we're almost everywhere, you know. Right, but mm -hmm. EOU, I mean, I, I'm thinking of Scott McConnell yeah. starting, you know, side A. I mean, so there cool. are there are EOU staff and faculty mm -hmm. that are, I mean, there are business owners in the yeah. community. They're involved on the boards. They're serving on the boards. And Michael the, Fields is yeah. another good example right. yeah. of that. He's great. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, and all of that is such such a key, not mm -hmm. only because of the character, but because of their skill mm -hmm. and, uh, and their experience that they bring with them. So yeah. do you, when, when you're hiring, mm -hmm. when, you, when you guys are filling, tell me, you know, is, are people finding professionals that want to move to the community? Mm -hmm. Are they having troubles finding a place to live? Yeah, I mean, just being honest, even I, you right. know, and, and, and it should be probably, I mean, it shouldn't be, but it, it should be easier for someone right, like right, me. To, right. But yeah, no, housing is is a difficult issue here. You know, there, there really isn't another way around it. Uh, you know, I think we try and offer some support. I think it's an area that we can grow and develop in. Um, yeah, housing housing is a difficulty. I do think EOU, however, really does attract the kind of talent that, that you mentioned because it is unique. You right. know, I, I think that for a long time and indeed even when I was hired, people sometimes see our isolation as a deficit. But for other people, it's also a strength, right? Um, right. For it depends on you know kind of how you enter the community. Um, uh, there's a, a young young man at the university who was just hired to be an assistant professor of history, Paul Newar and I. And every time we see each other, we share something new we've learned about Legrand. Um, like I'll, for example, take pictures of apple trees when they were blooming on my walk, and then send them to my friends in Kentucky to make them jealous. Um, you know, there are so many <laughs> right. kind of you know, and it. And it's everywhere you look. There's a, um, and I hope that kind of newness stays with me. Um, but there is, there's so much neat stuff here that I think that um, locals, it's easier for y'all to overlook because you're just used to it, right? Yeah. Um, there's, there's, there is, you know, something kind of exquisite about this area if you will open your eyes to it, right. you know, and, and the people are part of it. Well, and admittedly, the people of Eastern Oregon are complicated. You know, <laughs> I mean, they are because yeah. they're, and you know them now. Mm -hmm. You know what that means. I mean, there's a certain amount of them that, I mean, one of my slogans is we're Union County and we like who we are. And that is, that's very true. But the but is, though, is that there always has to be professionals, new professionals that are moving in, that are carrying on. We have to continue to build something that our kids and our, our grandkids will want to stay here to do. Well, that means newness that means new people and new things mm -hmm. and and sometimes that is contrary to we are union county and we like who we are because yeah. it, those things don't always so the complication is we're a little conflicted inside yeah yes we like who we are but at the same time 
there has to be a pathway, and it's not just it's not just EOU faculty and staff. It's mm -hmm. the hospital faculty and staff, mm -hmm. or I mean, they're they're professionals. They yeah. so there's been so much emphasis on the housing crisis and trying to because people are homeless and and we're trying to accommodate them. But the other part of that crisis is professionals don't really have a place to move into also. Mm -hmm. And so they're buying down, and that is, that's part of what's compressing mm -hmm. the market and raising prices. Mm -hmm. So I got some comments yeah. coming in. Our, our producer, Benny, is a fourth-generation EOU student. All right, I, I didn't love know that. that. So mom and dad are both Ben. Yeah, ben yeah. Mom and dad both went there. Mom's grandma, both of his siblings went there. And then his it, Ben just texted me and he said, we aren't the middle of nowhere, we're the middle of everywhere. Oh, that's cute. I <laughs> yeah. love it. And then Bud Forrest wants to know, how do you like inheriting the front staircase project? <laughs> Big project for your first year because it means a lot to so many people it that does. went there. It yeah. really does. I mean, my whole childhood, it, the, the stairs were, up, you know, we played kick the can. You know what I mean? Like it yeah. was just part of, of EOU, the 8th Street Hill and, mm -hmm. and the stairs. So Yeah. Thank you for asking. So I, I, this is sort of a silly thing to say, but so when I came here um, and I saw the stairs, I was like, oh, it's like visiting ancient Greece and Rome. <laughs> There's this rebel. And, and I had sort of thought that this, that, that the way it was, was new, right? That the kind of the, the crumbling and stuff was new. And, and then I had lunch with an alumni. She's like, oh no, it, that's been broken for a long time. That's just been sitting there. A um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's a very difficult project. Um, as, as some of you may know in the audience, um, you know, funding for higher education is difficult. Capital projects are even more difficult. Mm. And, and that's a project that also has really neat historical value in addition to the sentimental value that, that's been expressed by your community. Uh, I was recently shown, uh, I think, a Facebook page by the Friends of the Staircase. Yeah. And I got to read through the really beautiful memories that people have on that staircase. And, and it was, you know, it was good for me to learn that. It was right. good for me to learn about the sentimental yeah, value. Everything from prom pictures pictures to to weddings there's been yeah. weddings on that staircase and it's so ornate i mean it's so ornate it really kind of just rings that like 1920s and 1930s kind of architectural experience. Um, and yet the world has changed so much, most significantly in the last two years with escalating costs around um, supply construction. chain construction. Yeah. Um, so, so the project is a difficult one. Um, the funding that was delivered to us is not enough to rebuild it back to its highly ornate uh, original structure. And yet, we're so committed because that staircase isn't just a sentimental experience. It's, it's also, um, you know, for us, it's our way of saying we're part of this community. Right. It's the gate between mm -hmm. LeGrand right. and EOU. Yeah. Sure. And so for us, you know, the most important thing is just making sure that connection stays alive. And so we're actually going to present the new designs at uh, the next LeGrand approval uh, meeting in, I think it's May. Or April, I can't remember which. Um, but yeah, so we have a new design. It's scaled back, but again, the key thing is recreating that experience of connecting in low, such an important building, um, and the campus to the community. So we're working on reconstructing it. Um, good Lord, it better be done by year's end because we got <laughs> <laughs> that money. So we're hoping for a quick approval process so that we can um, create new memories, yeah. you know, yeah. create new memories and new connections. With I think community. one thing that is super important is to maintain the, 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 the clearance mm -hmm. because for a long time there was a disconnect because of all the trees. Yeah. Like you, you didn't even, you couldn't even see in low from, from down, wow. down there for, for years because okay. The shrubbery and the trees had grown so high. I mean, if you look at pictures from like the the, the 90s, especially, mm -hmm. like you can't see it. Well, yeah. So I think one of the most important things is going to be maintaining that that access and that view because it it really is a, a gateway from Lagrand to. I mean, it's only a few blocks from downtown to, to that staircase. It's, yeah, it, it's awesome. Yeah. We don't unfortunately own all that property around the staircase, and so there's limited limited amounts from which we can actually clear it out. But I think that's a really good point I'll yeah. bring up, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just for clarification, mm -hmm. the money for the staircase, we can't, you can't use that on roads. <laughs> you guys can't use that to pay faculty. Yeah. You guys can't, yeah, I mean, it's it is. It's a grant, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, no, okay. it's yeah. any, you know, just being honest, like budgets in higher education are, are so rarefied. I mean, there's, there's certain pots and right. you cannot interchange them. Right. It just simply doesn't work right. like that. So this money must be used on the staircase, the staircase only. Yeah. And it, you know, it must be approved by our local authorities and historic preservation. Committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So before, before we quit, mm -hmm. so tell me, you know, what are the challenges that you're facing? I mean, there, there, there are sometimes I hear people with dismal opinions about EOU and, you know, it's right on the brink or it's right. I don't know. Yeah. What, what are, where are we at? We're not on the brink. Okay. That's okay. Good. Yeah. No, I, I want everyone to know we're not on the brink. That's we're, good. We're yeah. still here. And in fact, we're excited to be here. Um, we do, however, have issues, right? Like, like every regional university in the United States, uh, these messages that are out there about the value of college um, threaten our survival. That's the truth. And it's not EOU, you know, as an institution, that's the problem. It's a, a myth, a narrative that isn't true. Uh, you know, if you look at unemployment rates, 2.5% for people with college degrees, which is about as low as it can get. It actually is something called frictional unemployment, where basically people are changing jobs. You're not going to see that um, among a high school educated only, right? Mm -hmm. um, chances of unemployment are greater. You're going to earn the median wages is 16.5% more, which actually ends up to be about a million dollars more over the course of your lifetime. Right. So there's so much, I think, false narratives in the community about, not just this community, in the nation, about right. the value of college degree that it's actually undermining the enterprise. And again, do you want doctors? Do you want nurses? Uh, do you want educators? Do you want managers? Do you, you want have employees? to have those. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so I, I think, you know, that's a struggle that we have, but you know, I think we're solving it in really unique ways by actually deepening really good already existing partnerships. You know, um, we have great partnerships with LeGrand and Baker. Uh, we've got um, admissions counselors there. We've been working with a ton of our local high schools just to remind them and to have pride again in your local institution. Um, you know, Absolutely. I stand EOU's success up against any other mm. institution in this state for offering an excellent education. The thing we're also not going to do, though, is saddle you with debt. Mm. And so, you know, to me, it's a smart, it's a practical choice, but it's one that allows you to be able to take advantage of, you know, that transformative life experience that also means you're going to be able to better provide for your family. And then there's a whole bunch of things, of course, that, that people don't think about, like having better access to health care and, and things like that that come with a college degree. Okay. So we are working on the enrollment pipeline, and, and that's actually been pretty exciting work. We're also really focused on student success and the student experience. That's why we're there. So for example, we had a campus vitality campaign this year to bring life back to the campus after those pandemic experiences sort of diminish the engagement. We just had an incredible success. Um, the Stress Less event, which was held in our new field house, we had over 600 visitors to that event, and it included awesome. community yeah. members. They actually set up... Um, courts for people to play. You could smash plates. It was so <laughs> fun. Um, and, and so we're seeing incredible successes like that. And I've been working a lot with the community to try and find additional ways for us to engage and connect our students with um, more of a LeGrand experience. Yeah. Um, so we're really focused on that. And then, of course, we're really mindful of our budget. Uh, we're trying to reduce our budget to make sure, again, that we're not saddling, um, you know, saddling our entering students with the high costs of, of tuition that you hear so much about in the news. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're also kind to think about the future. So I've been meeting with a lot of superintendents in our community, trying to figure out how EOU can better serve them. As we know, there's a teacher shortage. There's also a shortage of professionals to help with speech therapy, mm -hmm. um, which we know is a significant issue. Um, so we're working with them to try and build programs. I've also met with several of our local correctional institutions. As we know, um, education is very powerful. It can reduce recidivism. It can mean that there's less crime in our communities. It can mean that our correctional institutions have less behavioral institute, mm -hmm. less behavioral problems yep. because they can think more clearly about a brighter future. Yeah. So there's so much work going on. Um, much of it, you know, I think really future focused, trying to think about what's the EOU for the next 10 years. Right.
Right. I got a question before we're done. Okay. And we're running yeah. short on time. So you got 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, this is a question. I've probably interviewed close to 200 EOU athletes All right. since, since I've been doing uh, EO Alive. And I ask every single athlete this question at the end of every interview. I'm, I'm a high school senior. Recruit me to EOU. Why should I go to EOU? Oh, gosh. I think you should come because it's going to be an intimate experience. It's one that's going to allow you to meet and have mentors um, and people who understand where you're from. You're not going to be just another number. You're going to come to our campus and get to meet other people who are like-minded, like you, and represent your community. We're also very flexible. You're probably going to want to take a kind of part-time job on the side. You'll have an ability to be able to take a few online classes in addition to your in-person classes because we want to fit your lifestyle needs. Mm -hmm. We have incredible facilities on our campus. You've probably seen them all, Kyle. Um, these are world-class experiences. We have 15 athletic teams. The campus I came from, we had seven. That means there's so much fun. There's always something happening. In addition, we also have the theater and the arts. There's just something for everyone here. Mm -hmm. Coming up, we have Macbeth on campus for those of you who are interested in, in getting to see it. Mm -hmm. Love it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Wow. I am... I'm really thankful. I'm sold. Yeah, go ahead. What's that? Yeah. No, I said I'm sold. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really thankful that that we got this version of you than the version of you six months ago. Frankly, because, yeah. no, I, because, I am too. I'm, no, because I'm you are. Waiting. Because because had you been on the show six months ago, you'd be like, well, I'm just learning. I'm getting acquainted. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the passionate side. You're passionate this morning. Oh, yeah. I'm I always like this, and I love chance. that. No, but. <laughs> I, no, but I saw I saw you talk at our Rotary group, and I mean, you're just you've. I think you've got a, you clearly have a grasp of what EOU is mm -hmm. and what it has to offer, mm -hmm. and that's you know that's awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. So so good. Uh, yeah, hope you hope you can come back and We'd and, be happy and to. give us give us updates. So yeah, <laughs> get us out of here, man. Let's do it on this day, which is today's March 28th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, March 28th. 1866, the first ambulance goes into service. 1885, the U.S. Salvation Army is formally organized. So there was Salvation Army in, in England long before that, but in the United States, yeah. 1885. And then it, there nothing really happened on this day, so I skipped all the way to 2017. On 2017, the world's largest dinosaur footprint is found ever. The biggest one ever, 1.7 meters a foot. Wow. That, that, that's a big foot, man. And that was in Kimberley, Western Australia. 1.7. 1. 1.7 so meters. Meters, right. Yeah. So it's, That's almost six feet. That's five feet. Yeah. Five and, and, right, and a little. Right, right. That's yeah. a big foot. Yeah. That is a number one song in America on this day in 2004. This Love by Maroon 5. <laughs> and then the quote of the day comes from Albert Einstein. The, you're, this, this is fun. I didn't even think about this, but but this is this isn't to speak that education is not important. But Albert Einstein says the only source of knowledge is experience. Yeah, yeah. But he had a pretty good education when he said. That. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. And 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 education is experience. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. No, yeah. Th thanks so much for ringing those bells today. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It was Excellent. a pleasure. Thank yeah. you for having me. We'll be yeah. back on Tuesday. Yep. We'll see you guys soon.